Hi, I'm Carl Azus. It's great to see you this Wednesday. The Samsung Technology Company, which is based in South Korea, has stopped making and selling one of its most important products and the decisions having ripple effects around the world. First of all, if your smartphone is a Samsung Galaxy Note 7, and analysts estimate there could be as many as 2 million of them still out there, officials say you should stop using it immediately. Shut it off, don't recharge it, keep it away from airplanes and trains, and take it back to the store where you bought it. The device went on sale in August. It cost at least $850 in the U.S. and had good reviews from critics for its design and power. But then, many of the phones started catching fire. The company tried to fix the problem by updating the phone's software and changing battery suppliers. Samsung executives apologized repeatedly, but they officially gave up on all that Tuesday, recalling 2.5 million Galaxy Note 7s. The company's stock suddenly dropped, while that of Apple, one of its competitors, has been on the rise. Analysts say Samsung should still be able to stay in business, but that's just one challenge ahead of the company. The true beauty of Galaxy Note 7. The Galaxy Note 7 is no more. Just two months after its triumphant launch, Samsung's flagship smartphone has been relegated to a disastrous footnote. A refund or a completely different Samsung phone, the only option for customers. Cases of the phone overheating and bursting into flames, followed by reports of replacements with the exact same problems, prove too much for the South Korean tech giant. Samsung says it's putting customers' safety as top priority, but has the damage already been done? The problem is, last week, the allegedly fixed devices still had problems, and suddenly this whole issue of trust has been compromised. Now we're not sure whether we can believe what Samsung says. Customers in South Korea are notoriously loyal to their greatest export, a company that's believed to account for up to 15% of South Korea's GDP many vowing to stick by the company no matter what. This man who owns a Note 7 said, I don't think they've lost credibility. I've always used Samsung's products. It's too difficult to move to another brand. This woman tells me competition with Apple is fierce already and this could mean they'll now be chasing them one step behind. It's really regrettable. Patriotic support of a company that doesn't translate to the rest of the world. Weeks of announcements on board flights asking Samsung Note 7 owners to turn them off and keep them off during the flight. All portable tank devices must be switched off the pickup and landing. Thank you. A negative message reaching far beyond even their own customers. Flood warnings were in place last night in parts of the U.S. states of Maryland, Virginia and the Carolinas. More flooding was expected in riverside towns of North Carolina, where 31 of the state's 100 counties have been declared federal disaster areas. That speeds up help and funding to the places that need it. All of this is the result of Hurricane Matthew, even though the storm passed days ago. Thousands of rescues have been made. Thousands of people have been sent to shelters. Hurricane Matthew's death toll in the U.S. is at least 24 people, but that's only a fraction of the hundreds who were killed in the Caribbean nation of Haiti, where rebuilding efforts have started and have a long way to go. Days after Hurricane Matthew, help is on the way. Rice and plastic tarps choppered in by the U.S. military. Sadly, this humanitarian aid is only a drop in the bucket because the scale of the damage after this deadly storm is massive. Here's what's so terrifying about what we're seeing here. All of these homes destroyed, all of this destruction was caused by the hurricane's winds moving at speeds that are barely conceivable. In the port town of Jeremy, the storm flattened concrete walls and peeled the roofs off many buildings including the town's 19th century cathedral. Me and my family is living. In here? Yeah. Can we go in? Yeah. Tuman St. Plu so, takes me to what's left of his home. Oh, man. The big damage is the roof of my house is this a bit like you see. Just flew right off? Yeah, they flew right off. And then he, his wife and children, cowered in the corner yeah, like this, that, like exposed this. to the storm. Like For hours? For hours. In so, the rain, in the wind? Rain. So, the storm decimated the top floor of the town's main hospital. 
and made a mess of what's left. The wards that still function treat hundreds of new patients a day, including dozens of cases of cholera. Many here fear a wider outbreak of the deadly waterborne disease. The water is very, very is contaminated, so very difficult to, to have safe water. At the banks of the river, where residents now wash and bathe, these women tell me the storm surge drowned their pigs and cows, destroying their main livelihood and source of food. But the survivors are not giving up. While they wait for the outside world to send help, they are hard at work with the daunting challenge of getting this town back on its feet. U.S. President Barack Obama says the government's goal in the next chapter of space exploration is sending humans to Mars by the 2030s and then getting them safely back to Earth. He says the ultimate ambition is for people to spend time on Mars, but not all scientists agree. While some supporters say that people could search for life on Mars, that it could be a base for deeper space missions, that it could inspire future scientists, opponents say it's much cheaper to send robots instead, that the scientific data gathered by a human wouldn't be worth the trip, and that there are more pressing issues on Earth. While scientists debate a potential manned Mars mission's merits, what does the public think? Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. They say history is the best predictor of the future. That's one small step for man. And historically, the U.S. has been the leader in space exploration. So you got the flag up now. You can see the stars and stripes. But we're in a different time. Decades from the boundless Apollo era, when space exploration was a national priority. No nation which expects to be the leader of other nations, can expect to stay behind in this race for space. Now we're at a point where scientists and space enthusiasts say we need to push further. But the question is, does our country still have the will to go deeper than we've ever been before? We're closer to Mars today, humanity is, than we have ever been in the history of civilization. What are some of the lessons of the past that NASA is taking on these future missions to Mars. Some of the greatest lessons of the past have to do with our failures. Obviously a major malfunction. One of the things that we constantly remind ourselves is we have to be hungry all the time. What is it going to take to get to Mars? Blood, sweat, tears, some tragedy along the way, unfortunately. But the biggest thing, you know, the biggest thing is willpower. Beautiful view. Buzz Aldrin is the second man to walk on the moon and one of the most famous astronauts in history. Going to Mars, it's going to be one of the biggest challenges humanity has ever taken on. Do you think we have the will to actually pull this off? No, we don't have the will right now. And the public uh, is really not all that fired up. The whole atmosphere that we're living in is not like it was in the Apollo era. One big difference is the level of enthusiasm of the American public. The second big difference is the level of enthusiasm in Washington. And it's not just enthusiasm. NASA doesn't have an exact price tag for a manned mission to Mars. But some argue it could cost hundreds of billions of dollars. The U.S. is trying to lead the rest of the world uh, in exploring our solar system, but not, not a foray out and back, but, but actually expanding human presence throughout our solar system. At a performance, a pop concert, or even a wedding, costume changes are nothing new. But have you ever wondered if someone has set a record for the sheer number of them? The folks at Guinness World Records have. They have a category called Most Costume Change Illusions in One Minute by an Individual. And a pair of Malaysian magicians just set a new high bar with 18 changes of 19 costumes in just 60 seconds. At a dress shop, they've got to be the best costumer. The act was costume made, costume tailored, and costume fitted. And even though we may not know how they addressed the challenge, it's magic after all, it took a lot of great material from two change artists to outfit a successful show. I'm Carl Azuz, and that's CNN Student News.